through involute gear cutting with the shaper. The idea is to use the shaper as a rack type gear cutting machine using a single tooth rack. Here is a drawing of an attachment set on a hand shaper from an old 1950 issue of Modern Engineer magazine. The cutting motion is given to the ram red color in the y direction. The hand driving system is not shown. The generation motion is given to the gear wheel blank blue color. For this, a steel wire is wrapped on a PCD diameter cylinder orange color. The wire is linked to the transverse slide of the shaper, the feed given in the X direction. So the PCD cylinder is rolling without slipping on the tight wire, this being equivalent to a pinion and rack gear set. A cogged wheel and index latch are used as indexing devices for machining all the gear teeth. Advantages The single tooth is easy to make whichever the module or pressure angle and no problem for profile shifting. Also a gear can be cut near a shoulder that is not possible with a disc cutter or a hub. In convenience the process is quite long but often not more than milling using disc cutters. It's necessary to machine a cylinder to wrap the wire on for each gear to be cut. Many machinists have used this principle. Some links for YouTube videos are given in the description. But there are some limitations for this process. First, it's not necessary to have such a long wire as the transverse throw for cutting one tooth is quite small. Second, it's not possible to machine a small PCD gear as it's not possible to wrap the wire on a small diameter. Third, it's necessary to make a dedicated cylinder for each gear to be cut. So here is my solution to help solving the two first problems. You can see my attachment set on the shaper's table. The gear blank is held by the left spindle. The cutting tool can be seen on the left. The PCD cylinder is held by the right spindle. The wire is held on a bow. By the sliding part of the bow is moving in a guide linked to the attachment body. This bow is linked by a rod, only the left part of the, of the link can be seen, to the vertical slide of the shaper. So the wire is fixed during the transverse feed and the PCD cylinder rolling on. Now you can see the opposite side of the attachment, showing the dividing system borrowed from the dividing head. But you can also see that there is a multiplying gear set multiplying by 2 here, as from 60 teeth to 30 teeth pinion set on the output spindle. So the reference cylinder PCD will be twice the gear cut 1. It's also possible to set a multiplying by 5 gearing, so the smaller PCD possible for the gear cut can be as small as 6 mm. This photo showing a 90th module 0.7 pinion cut near a shoulder. Now the detailed process for cutting the gear shown on the photo, showing the gear dimensions and the span measure taken with a caliper. The Y diameter is 0.6 mm, so the PCD disc diameter is 47.4 mm, as twice the gear PCD less the wire diameter. Machine settings 180 strokes by minute, the maximum for my shaper, feed 0.1 mm by stroke, the minimum for my shaper, ram throw 35 mm. The attachment being clamped to the shaper's table, the gear blank set in the collet jack, the tool set and adjusted, the tool slide and clapper box being vertical, and the stop not locked. Move the table transverse movement for the tool to be centered then just on above the gear blank as shown on the photo. Bring the tool to just touch the gear blank and take a zero on the tool slide collar. Bring now the tool leftwards out from the blank. In fact, it's the blank that is moved rightwards by the transverse movement of the shaper. And take the maximum theoretical depth of cut, 
so 2.25 module here 3.375 millimeter from the tool slide move back the tool transfer movement to just touch the blank as shown on the photo make a felt mark on the vertical slide of the shaper just in front of an index felt drawn on the table move the ram back for the tool to clear the blank and repeat this routine to get a mark for the other side of the blank as shown on the photo these marks will of course show you the starting and finishing of the tool scattering process set the table at mid distance from these indexes in this position adjust the stop for the pcd cylinder to be in the middle of the wire and lock the stop take now the right depth of cut for roughing many roughing cuts may be necessary for a big module until say two module so here three millimeter the routine is as follows go to the starting point start the machine clutch the self-act pole on and let the machine work until the last index seen on this video Stop then the machine, clutch the self-act pole out, set the ram in the rear position, index for the next tooth, go back to the starting point and repeat this routine for roughing all the teeth, seen on this video. Now clearing the tool from the blank, indexing from the next tooth. And coming back to the starting point, taking the plate and go on. Take a span measure. Links are given for some explanations about this measure and for a chart and for also for a free software to get this dimension. From this measure, add the necessary depths of cut from the tools line for the finishing cut. This is shown on the picture. And repeat the routine for machining all the teeth. Take the last the span measure for a last control before taking out the finished pinion from the attachment. This pinion was then checked in a running test with a standard wheel for free and quiet run. And now the running test with a standard gear. The running is quiet and we will see this in under power. very slight noise but I think that's satisfactory the result is good a running test was also made with standard gears for comparison the running test with standard gears Of course, quiet running by hand <clears throat> and now under power.
a slight noise for a comparison with the cut gears. Now my second solution to help solving the third problem, so avoiding the need for a dedicated PCD cylinder. The idea is to use a variable length rod in place of the cylinder as shown on the photo. This idea came from a YouTube video. The link is given to watch this video. This works as the throw for cutting a single tooth is small, so they are small relative to a true cylinder rolling on a tight wire. The rod radius being adjusted to the PCD radius. Nevertheless, there is an error growing with the angle throw from the vertical position of the road, so the great so the greer said driving length is smaller and so more noise when running. Fortunately, the multiplying coefficient between the two spindles helps solving this problem. As the greater the multiplying coefficient, the smaller the error, as the angle throw of the rod is smaller too. New adjustments needed for the attachment. The PCD cylinder is replaced by a plain spacer. The variable rod is set on the other side of the spindle. The rod must be vertical and the linking rod horizontal, horizontal when the cutting tool is in the middle of its throw to minimize the error. The machining routine is the same as previously. This pinion was then checked in a running test with a standard wheel for free and quiet run. Running test with the rod gear. The running is quiet by hand. And now under power. The same slight no noise. I think it's satisfactory. Now a 8 teeth pinion with the shifted profile running with the 18 teeth wheel module 1. The end running is good. And the power running good too. Thank you for watching.